Wrestling is one of my favorite things in the entire world. Not just because how exciting it is to watch, but also the fact that it's always on. The average WWE fan will watch 8 plus hours of wrestling a week, and that doesn't even include pay-per-views. If you're an indie fan, however, those numbers can greatly increase. If you're like me, you want to watch the best wrestling has to offer. That's why I'm starting this series to break down the best matches I've seen every week from every company that I currently watch. This series will include WWE, New Japan, Impact Wrestling, and indie shows like GCW and Black Label Pro. Every show won't make the top 5 however, and some shows may even take up every spot on the top 5 list. While I have companies that I prefer and companies that I can't stand, this list will always remain unbiased. Also I'm only a human so I can't watch everything, so if there's a match that isn't on the list that you feel should be, don't hesitate to leave a comment telling me what it is. With that being said, this is my top 5 matches for September 22nd, 2019. GCW is one of the most slept on companies in independent wrestling today. While AEW recently signed many of their top stars, this fatal 4-way match from the Nick Gage Invitational proves that the company is far from done creating new ones. While the match was sloppy with many of these guys being pretty green, the innovation and offense that these athletes showcased was a spectacle that truly deserves to be witnessed. This match was also a nice break from a night of debauchery and violence. You can't see spots like this and not think that these guys have a future in the business. These guys are lifting the stakes and raising the bar to a level never thought possible. What will wrestling even be like 15 years from now? If the things seen in this match are any indication, then the future of indie wrestling and wrestling in general is one to be very excited about. On the opposite end of the spectrum, we have Monday Night Raw knocking out of the park this week with many shockingly great matches. Rey Mysterio is undoubtedly on his final run as he has been for many years now. He is one of the very few veteran wrestlers that can still go like he's still in his 20s. And while WWE has tended to hold Rey back in the past, this match was not an indicator of that whatsoever. Rey and Cesaro tore the house down this week in a match that didn't even need to be as good as it was. Also Cesaro has never reached a brass ring but as far as I'm concerned, this man has proved himself many times in the ring already. NXT made its debut this week with a stacked card, coming out guns blazing in its war with All Elite Wrestling. You can't have a card this stacked and expect it to fail. The only down point to NXT this week was the fact that half the show was on the USA Network with the other half being on the WWE Network. The opening match of this new era featured four women legitimately giving it their all like this was a takeover match. Bianca Belair, Io Shirai, Mia Yim, and Candice LeRae, pretty much every woman in this match had their moment to shine. NXT is still the top place in the world for women's wrestling, even if many of the women have moved on to greener and drier pastures. Also, Candice LeRae finally getting a women's title shot is the cherry on top to this already great match. The first hour of NXT started off with a bang, and the final part ended with an explosion. The feud between Dream and Strong ended in a match worthy of being on the new era of NXT. This match was almost like a reminder that even though this is a new era of NXT, this is still the same NXT that we know and love. With false finishes and the heartbreaking defeat of Velveteen Dream by the Undisputed Era, this was a big stakes match that felt important and had the ultimate payoff. The thought of getting to see matches like this every week on NXT is very exciting and something I'm definitely looking forward to. Baron Corbin isn't my favorite wrestler. He's probably not even in my top 50 or even 100. But in wrestling, there's always that one match that will go on to define a wrestler. Baron Corbin proved in this match that he has the it factor. The tension, the big fight atmosphere, the reversals, and Baron doing moves that we've never even seen him do before. To say that this match was better than Velveteen vs. Strong or Rey Mysterio vs. Cesaro may seem crazy to you. But we already know how good Rey Mysterio is. Baron Corbin broke through the glass ceiling this week making me invested in a match that I honestly didn't give two shits about. This match was Wrestling 101, with a piece of shit heel that everybody hates taking on an underdog. This match was essentially Triple H vs Daniel Bryan at Wrestlemania, just on a lower scale. We need more performances like this on Raw. Wrestlers that people don't care about going out there and becoming stars. The reason that this match is number one isn't just because it's a good wrestling match. It's a step in the right direction for the WWE. A company that has taken to relying on legends when they're sitting on a gold mine of talent just waiting to be cashed in.